Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. Today I'll be demonstrating how to create this tiramisu cake with a chocolate border decoration. I like to start off with the chocolate so it has time to set while I'm working on the cake. I've got a small baking tray filled with boiling water and then a larger tray on top. This is going to ensure that my chocolate doesn't set on me before I have the opportunity to blend the two colors together. I have dark chocolate and white chocolate by Nestle. Compound chocolate works really well here. And Nestle is my go-to. Once you have lots of dollops all over the place with minimal space in between, take a chopstick or a sharp object and twirl those colors together. Be mindful to fill in those little pockets here and there in between. Just give it a nice tight swirl until it's all touching. And then give it a good tap to even out the chocolate, make it a little bit thinner and it also shifts it into those little pockets if you missed any. Allow it to set for about 10 minutes and then cut it up with a knife. It might not be completely set, but that's okay. By creating these lines preemptively, it'll allow us to snap them into their individual rectangular pieces. I let mine go into the freezer. And in the meantime, I will build my tiramisu cake. This is a soft sponge that I've used stuck it to the board with a little bit of ganache and cream cheese and regular cream frosting. Use some coffee to wet the sponge. I've got the sugar syrup with that coffee and then I'm filling in with that mascarpone and cream cheese mixture. Mascarpone and cream mixture. Go over a layer of ganache and then repeat this layering schedule. I want to go again with the cream, the ganache, and then I have four layers of cake with three layers of filling. And it's important to use mascarpone cheese, not just because in tiramisu it typically features, but also the mascarpone cheese makes your cream, like fresh cream frosting, a lot more stable. It uh, makes it a lot firmer for you as well and easier to work with. Sometimes fresh cream on its own can be really hard to work with, really soft, and you wouldn't be able to build a cake of this height. It would be all really messy. Whatever ganache I had left, I mixed it into the cream frosting and then laid it over the top and over the sides, just smoothing it out with my frosting scraper. Once you're happy with the finish of the outside, you can drag that top lip towards the middle and then pop it into the fridge to set for about 20 minutes just to firm up slightly. Our chocolate is now nice and solid. You can crack it down the line that you cut and it shouldn't break. You should just cut right up against that line. Layer those onto the sides of the cake, overlapping them ever so slightly for interest. And then I also cut out some triangular ones that I could stick into the cake as another feature. Take some ganache and zigzag over the top of the cake if you like, and then add on any edible decorations. Here I've got tiny fresh strawberries and Maltese chocolates that I've coated in edible gold luster dust. And that's it. It is a very simple cake, but the swirling of the chocolate makes it look super gourmet. So I hope you guys give this one a go. If you do, hashtag Rosie's Dessert Spot so I can check out your gorgeous creation. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in the next video.